So welcome back to part two of the summer house build. This week is all about how we cladded it. So keep on watching if you want to see how we got on. First, we worked on the far right side, which we only ply lined. The reason for this was we later planned to add a lean to shed there, so it wasn't needed. I used a small off cut piece of wood, marked it by about an inch, which I then used as a reference. I put my first screw in the corner so I could pull it square, line up again, and more all around. Now you could use a jigsaw or a handsaw to trim off the excess, but instead I'm using a router with a flush trim bit to match the frame's height. Also note the end of the cladded sheet also finished in the centre of each spar. And then repeated screwing and trimming down the next sheet. And to make it more secure, we used a straight edge to draw a line where all the spars were underneath and screwed those down as well. And then we'd treat it with wood preserver and set aside. But I think eventually it got about two coats. And now to clad the opposite side, but this time we're using strips of cladding and I'm using the same overhang reference block and nailed it down with a nail gun. I'll leave a link to everything that we used in the description box below. My dad recommended getting that first one straight and nailed down, flush with the end as I'll be adding a trim later. Then line up another three, ensure they've slotted in, nail the top side down and then you can line the ones up in between if needed and once you're happy with them you can nail the rest but I have learned it's best to take your time with it and some of the tongue and groove on it can be tight when you need a mallet and these ones in particular were short because I'll be making a gate type door adjacent to it later Then I nailed down some shorter pieces on the opposite side of the door, but I'll give you a tip that was always told, and that is to keep your fingers away from it, just in case a nail goes in on an angle and pokes through. Thankfully though, that's never happened, but I can imagine it does. And when I got to the door and window, it was important that I nailed them down level. That way, the long continuous strips at the top also matched. And after slotting in, I nailed down the end, but before I cut the rest, my dad cut down the overhang with a handsaw. Then I worked on nailing the rest of the shorter pieces, while my dad then trimmed the excess around the window. We would have used a flush trim round a bit here, but we set it aside for now as my husband was using the extension lead on another job. So you can probably imagine where this went, more cladding with the nail gun and matching the same overhang, but this time we're working on the front of the summer house. And when I got to the pitched roof, I nailed some shorter pieces. If you've got any off cuts, these are great for this area. And then we'd use a flush trim route a bit again. Although I ended up passing this on to my dad because it was such a struggle, which we soon realized was because the bearing had come off it. So off camera, we cut it off by hand. As for the back, we're never gonna see this bit as it will be sat right in front of a brick wall. So we ply lined it again. And to trim the last section of cladding down, I used my gifted works compact saw instead. And its tracking guide was really useful for it to cut a straight line and then we'd line it up. And my dad also used it for the top two and it came in very handy. And now I needed to create a notch space for the roof to sit on and not move while it's on. So I've got a strip of wood here and I'm setting it back to the depth of the structural timber and I pilot hold and screwed it on in several places. My 
My dad then asked me to repeat that on the front, drawing on the inside of the offcut to create a notch. And again, drill and screw the batten along the top either side. And now we're giving the back its first coat of preservative and set aside so we could get to the base again, which we then placed on the weed control and bricks, clamped and screwed it together. And to prevent any weaknesses, we packed as many gaps as we could see with treated wood. Then onto ply lining the base, which involved a lot of screws. My mum's kindly propping up the back. Mums are very useful. And remember the cladding overhang is overlapping the edge of the base. Meanwhile, my dad and husband are propping up the side while I screw that to the back section. Then we moved on to the opposite side. And then the front. And screwed it down to the base. And once that was done, I then nailed some trim pieces on all corners where there wasn't any cladding. So that's it again for this week. Next week I'll show you how we fitted the windows, trim, roof and how I built a gate style door for the side. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.